In talking about communication, there are two types of communication. There's verbal and there's nonverbal communication. We're going to start with verbal communication because in theory, it is the first thing that people, when you walk into a room, when you start talking to them, verbal communication is part of what gets your point across. It's not the only thing that gets your point across, but it is part of what gets your point across. Verbal communication is all things that are uttered. And I don't mean just words, but also sounds and the tone of your voice. If I were to say, today we're going to talk about verbal communication, the tone of my voice doesn't convey what I actually believe from that sentence. I believe that talking about verbal communication is very exciting. So for me to say it that way, it doesn't match what we'll talk about in a little bit. The words you choose also communicate more than just themselves. If you choose words that don't match your audience, meaning your audience may not understand all of them. If you're speaking to children, you tend not to use very big words. In speaking to adults, you tend not to talk like you would to children. The words have to match your audience. Any sounds you utter, the dreaded um when you're speaking. Hello, um, uh, I'm uh, Dina and um, I might be very confident and I might actually be very good at what I do, but those ums in my verbal communication detract from my credibility. So let's look at a specific example that we're going to use when we talk about verbal and nonverbal communication. For example, you walk into a meeting, everybody you're supposed to meet with is there, your whole team is there, you sit down and the first thing you say is, how uh, <clears throat> are we uh, <clears throat> all today? Those words that you used, the slip on the words, the tone you used, the clearing of your throat, that says a lot more than what the words just say. So using that example, the people in the room might wonder if she's got bad news to give us. A lot of times when people have bad news, they, uh, well, <clears throat> you know, they uh, don't get their words together, they clear their throat, they're trying to detract from what it is they have to do. It could also be that I had fabulous news to tell you and my brain is somewhere else. So it's really important that you realize as the communicator, especially as the leader of the team, that you realize as the communicator that when you speak, your words need to be the ones you intend, the appropriate words, they need to have the right sound to them, and they need to have the right tone. We're going to take this information and we're going to match it up with nonverbal communication and talk about how it changes the meaning of the sentence completely if you look differently or act differently than the words that you're using. Let's take a look at nonverbal communication. But keep in mind that how you string the words together also will have an effect on what you've said and how people receive it.